hi everyone in this video i am continuing the measurement of uh, humidity using the device called hygrometer in the previous videos i have started this uh, measurement of humidity with resist to hygrometer and capacitive to hygrometer capacitive to hygrometers are again classified into several types the first method i have explained in the previous video uh, like um, uh, microwave refractometer the second type is aluminium oxide hygrometer so this is the aluminium oxide hygrometer it consists of some outer electrodes which are coated in the gold layer oxide layers it is having pore material pore side and pore base so inner electron aluminium so this is the inner electron aluminium last one so in this hygrometer the aluminium oxide is coated with anodized aluminium the dielectric constant and the resistance of the aluminium changes by the effects of the humidity so if you remember when i explained the concept of a capacitance hygrometer the capacitance hygrometer is explained in such a way where it is designed in such a way where the two conducting plates are separated by a dielectric medium this dielectric medium is being made up of hygrometer material hygrometer material okay now our aim is to find what is the amount of uh, humidity measured by this hygrometer material so uh, this material we are making up in different ways the capacitance here we are constructing to ca to capture the uh, water uh, vapor content present in the atmosphere so if this water content absorbed by this hygrometer then capacitance value decreases so that the resultant parameter like voltage or current will be varied this is the actual process in the capacitance hygrometer works so a dielectric constant and the resistance of the aluminium changes by the effects of humidity here also we are taking the same if the humidity is affected if the humidity is captured by this device then simply the capacitance or resistance of the device will be varied <coughs> So the aluminium oxide hygrometer uses the aluminium as their one electrode and the gold layer as the second electrode. Okay, see this is the aluminium electrode. In the bottom part we have an aluminium plate that is acting like electrode 1 and in the top layer we have a gold layer which is the outer electrode. This is the second electrode, electrode 2 and this is some electrode 1. The second electrode is porous for absorbing the air vapor moisture. The second electrode, we, the second electrode is made in such a way that such a way that the electrode is used to capture the moisture content present in the atmosphere. So whenever the moisture content absorbed by this, the internal capacitance action will be affected. <coughs> the changes occur in the capacitance and resistance of the material because of humidity the change in properties changes the impedance of the material the impedance measures with the help of the bridge the impedance measures with the help of any bridge like a wheatstone's bridge or any dc bridge okay generally wheatstone's bridge is preferred because wheatstone's bridge is used to measure the resistance value but what type of value we are changing here capacitance capacitance value we are changing not resistance we have to keep keep this point in mind we are changing the capacitance value in the previous uh, case when the first resistance hygrometer was discussed we have taken a bridge there that bridge was a Wheatstone's bridge because the resistance of the device will be varied because of the change in the humidity. So resistance changes can be identified by a DC bridge called Wheatstone's bridge. But when we go to this capacitance bridge, capacitance change, Wheatstone's bridge is not sufficient because Wheatstone's bridge is a DC bridge. Okay, then we have to go for some AC bridge. AC bridge capacitance changes identification can be calculated. Uh, variation in the capacitance can be calculated by using some shearing bridge. By using some shearing bridge. So shearing bridge is used here to calculate the changes in the capacitance value so that the unknown capacitance which has been varied can be calculated. Okay, so like shearing bridges we are using. The hygrometer is an essential component in all electronic systems. <laughs> 
and second type of hygrometer is a crystal hygrometer so crystal hygrometer is also a type of capacitor hygrometer so where a quartz crystal is placed in between the two electrodes so, so this is the first electrode and this is second electrode so this is one electrode and this is another electrode in between these two a quartz crystal has been placed in between and the around surrounded by this hygroscopic coating in crystal hygrometer the hygrometer crystal or the crystal having the coating of hygroscopic material is used when the crystal absorbs the drops of water the mass of the crystal changes okay so simply what happens here it simply absorbs the water drops in the uh, humidity wherever you want to measure in that content it simply absorbs the water molecule so that it changes its capacitance it changes its property so that the capacitance of the quartz crystal will be varied the change in mass is proportional to the total water absorbed by the crystal the change in the mass is proportional to the total water absorbed by the crystal so in this way the capacitance will be affected so that the resultant parameter whatever the electrical quantity we are measuring that will be affected so these are the capacitive hygrometer devices like uh, we have started with the capacitive hygrometer devices with uh, microwave refractometer second one aluminium oxide hygrometer and third one is crystal hygrometer now we are going to the third type of hygrometer that is a thermal hygrometer where the heat is involved so in thermal hygrometers the change in thermal conductivity of air due to humidity is measured in thermal hygrometers the change in the thermal conductivity of the air due to humidity is measured so uh, because of humidity uh, the air temperature will be varied thermal conductivity will be varied these sensors measure absolute humidity rather than relative humidity so another important point here uh, i told you there are three types of humidities there are absolute humidity relative humidity and uh, specific humidity in between among these three here the thermal humidity thermal hygrometer measures absolute humidity rather than relative humidity what is the difference between absolute and rather uh, relative humidity relative humidity is measuring uh, the humidity at a particular temperature but absolute humidity is not bothering about temperature it simply calculates the humidity irrespective of temperature so the thermal conductivity of the temperature will be varied because every time the temperature varies in the moisture content in the atmosphere so it is very difficult if you take the uh, uh, what is that temperature into consideration so definitely we should go for absolute humidity rather than relative humidity the thermo hygrometer measures both humidity of the air and temperature of the air so it calculates both the humidity of the air and as well as temperature of the air the thermo hygrometer measures different ranges of humidity and temperature depending on the model the thermo hygrometer is versatile in that it take in that it can take measurements store them to memory and transfer data to a computer for further detailed analysis so, so once the data is calculated by the hygrometer later it can be stored for different purposes so at what temperature we have measured at what is the hygrometer we have calculated so like the different parameters we can analyze using this stored data the thermo hygrometer usually offers contactless working which enables non-destructive measurements uh, so uh, humidity of a product can be measured without any contact with them the thermo hygrometer is very useful in evaluating damage in a warehouse many warehouses need to be at an exact temperature with a specific level of humidity example for flowers and food suppose uh, take food suppose you want to preserve you want to preserve the food for many days then we need to maintain certain temperature like flowers flowers if we keep normally flowers at outside simply they will damage after one day or one and a half day so we need to give some certain we need to arrange certain temperature to them so that they will be preserved for many days so in such cases this type of thermo hygrometer thermal hygrometers are used so that it maintains the temperature properly if any changes are there it will be detected and automatically we can identify 
a difference in temperature or humidity would mean that the stored product gets damaged or even destroyed this is the meaning actually so when the temp when the humidity or a temperature when we are suppose we are keeping some items in the fridge okay current is gone power is gone what happens what about the items we kept in the fridge they will damage definitely okay until and unless there is a power then definitely no problem with the items what we keep in the what we kept in the fridge okay so we have to maintain proper temperature always a constant temperature to maintain the items uh, preserved properly so in household the temperature and humidity or moisture content is also important the optimal temperature environmental conditions of our humans are around 20 degrees and 50 to 65 percent air humidity this is the normal human temperature and as well as humidity conditions 20 percent around 20 percent we are living around 22 25 27 like that okay if we have more than that we will go to some cool areas like that okay and here humidity is also around 50 to 65 percent the thermo hygrometer is also ideal for monitoring the environmental with with within clear clean rooms labs storage rooms and computer rooms so these are the different applications and uses of this thermal hygrometer and the last one is a gravimetric hygrometer where it works with the gravity so a gravimetric hygrometer and used gravity to calculate the humidity by measuring the weight of the column of air a proportion can be determined when comparing that weight with the weight of the dry air so what it simply do is surface air pressure is equal to weight of the air in column above area so it calculates the air content air weight when there is no humidity and when there is a humidity so that it finds the difference between that those two and it gives the humidity content so gravimetric hygrometers are considered the most accurate primary method to determine the moisture content in the air so gravimetric hygrometers are typically large and cumbersome to use the uh, to use and are thus typically used to calibrate less precise hygrometers. So, gravimetric hygrometers measure a given sample of air as compared to equal volume of controlled dry air. Highly accurate and expensive gravimetric hygrometers are used to set standards throughout the United States, United Kingdom, European Union and Japan using these devices is difficult and challenging so they are usually reserved for calibrating less accurate hygrometers generally and most precisely for any long applications we are not using these gravimetric applications gravimetric hygrometers we go with the normal uh, previous uh, uh, resistive capacitive and thermal hygrometers okay this is very rarely used gravimetric hygrometers so this is about completely humidity measurement using hygrometers uh, four different types of hygrometers. Thank you.